you recollect things in your mind and you recollect other things only as a result of hypnosis. Can we start with the first bit? What were you actually doing that night and what, what did you see? Well, I was driving the uh, Panda car uh, along Burnley Road in Todmorden and uh, I came across this strange craft blocking the road. Describe it to me. Well, it was about 20 feet high, about 14 feet wide. Uh, it was a diamond-shaped object hovering about five feet off the ground. Now, at this point, you didn't see anybody, did you? Uh, no, I didn't see anything but other than that. Did you approach it? I got within about 20 feet of it. And then you went back to your car to report it, did you? No, I didn't get out of the car. Ah. I didn't want to get out of the car. You didn't? No. <laughs> but you, you got on the blur, did you? I got on the radio, both radios, the uh, VHF in the car and the UHF personal radio that we carry. Yeah. And uh, I got no response at all. They didn't work? No. Was that unusual? Not in that particular area. There are black spots yeah. in the area. But the, the radios have worked there since. And then you left the scene, did you? The next thing I remember was I was at the other side of where the object had been, driving the car. Away? Away. Did you report it when you got back? I certainly did. Mm. They thought you were crackers, presumably. Yeah, they did. <laughs> well then, as a result of hypnosis, a lot of that story has been filled in, hasn't it? Now, what, is, <clears throat> what do you recollect from the result of the hypnosis? Well, as I say, I have no conscious memory of what I said under hypnosis. The only thing I could, I can go off is uh, the hypnotic regressions were videotaped. Yeah. And uh, I, I think there was about three or four tapes done. And when I actually was allowed to see them at the end of the session, uh, it was quite frightening. What you'd said under hypnosis? Mm. So what, what, tell me the other story now, the one that they, they drew out under hypnosis. Well, under hypnosis, uh, when I see the craft itself, as I said before, I didn't get out of the car consciously. I find myself getting out of the car, and uh, for some reason, I have no idea why, uh, a strange, very powerful beam of light is shone towards me, which blinds me. I jump back in the car in panic, and then there is some sort of a blackout. And after the blackout, I wake up in some sort of an examination room. I see. So. Uh this spaceship, or whatever it is, uh, did you see that in your recollected...? Uh... Yes, everything in unhypnotic regression, everything was accurate right up to... The bit that... The when I got out of the car, yes. Yeah. OK, well, describe this creature to me, this man. Well, he was a humanoid, or of human appearance. He's about six feet high. But not quite a human being, you Well, he had a human appearance. Yeah. Uh, he, he had a beard, and he, he wore some sort of a skull cap and he wore like a white gown. He was very pleasant in appearance. He wasn't at all frightening to look at. OK, now you've, you've got yourself into this room. What goes on there? Who else is there? <clears throat> there were, uh, I think I said there was eight uh, small three-foot eye creatures that transpilated during the hypnotic regression uh, as robots. Uh, were you in a normal room, or were you in a spaceship, rather like uh, Doctor Who's time capsule? Were you in something as kind uh, of... It looked bigger than his capsule. Yeah. You know, it doesn't look very big, does it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> but inside it, yes, very, I would say it's very similar. And then they, what, they tried to undress you, didn't they, at one point? Take your shoes and socks off. Why? Why was that? Uh, well, this is one of the funny things about it. When I got back to the station, I found that my left boot was split, and I had a burn mark on the instep mm -hmm. of my left foot. And in the hypnotic regression, they actually examined my left foot. Now, that's remarkable to me, with the other evidence of the other police officers seeing the craft as well. Isn't it? How did your experience end in this place you were with, with these people? <clears throat> uh, the doctor woke me up. We never actually got to an ending. Yeah. Uh, I was wired up to some heart machines, yeah. and they completely went off the scale. I was in such stress that the, both doctors stopped, mm. stopped the hypnotic regressions. Now tell me, what do you make of it all? Do you believe now in UFOs or, or what? <clears throat> Are you convinced that those things actually happen to you or, or it's just in your mind somewhere as an imagination or a dream or something like that? Well, the UFO certainly existed. You're uh, sure? Yes, it was a nuts and bolts craft. I'm, I think I'm quite capable of seeing something from 20 feet. Uh, well, if I said to you, was, anything, I you take, anything you say will be taken out of use in evidence, you would say that you saw that thing? Uh, yes, I would swear on, I would swear on the Holy Bible. You what would. I saw that day, I've seen nothing of the like, except in science fiction films. And what other thoughts have you had about the whole experience? Uh, the abduction part, well, I've 
thought about it. I thought, well, perhaps it's something that I've read about and seen as Doctor Who. Mm. And because of my experience, it somehow got jumbled up. Yeah. Or it actually happened. Yeah. It's a good story, isn't it? I think it's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a whole a whole series of Doctor Who's. Well, I mean, what do you make of it, Colin? I mean, you, you work in the fiction of this. I mean, he is saying this isn't fiction. He is saying, I actually saw that thing. I mean, sitting here listening to the story, I cannot do anything but totally believe it. Yeah. And viewed by any objective standard, I think that it's perhaps naive of us to think that we are the only things that exist in this huge universe. Nicola, what do you think of all that? I, th I think it's rather pompous to think that we're the only people mm. around. Um, that there isn't possible, possibly life somewhere else without, you know, we don't have the facts of everything. So I think it's rather pompous to think we're the only people. Alan, and you I are taken very seriously, I mean, aren't you, by, by people who, who, uh, who study these things? I mean, what, <clears throat> what do they say about your experience? Are they also convinced that you actually went through this experience and those things and those people were actually there? I think they are, yes. I think the UFO investigators that came to interview me, uh, one of them being a high-ranking police officer from the Greater Manchester Police Force, uh, he really gave me a grilling, yeah. uh, as he obviously is very experienced in it. And I think, well, they are convinced. Yeah. I mean, we did. I saw a UFO. Mate. No mistake, they do exist. There is nothing on this earth will ever tell me any different. Well, I mean, if you say that, mm. I just cannot, as uh, Nicholas says, possibly believe otherwise. Thank you very much for telling the story. Absolutely fascinating. And uh, if anything else happens to you, let us know. Really. <laughs> there we are. I'm sitting here in a cold sweat. Follow that, David Icke. <laughs> Actually, interestingly, wasn't there a, a couple in America called The Hills who mm -hmm. went through exactly the same experience? I think they went I through understand so, yeah. Yeah, they went through hypnosis. And, and the way it's described it, I read an article, it's exactly the way they described it, you know? Up to the point where they went in the craft, they could remember everything, then bang. You know, and the hypnosis, they described the same sort of things as you did. There are many, many cases of uh, abductions in this country that have that I know about now. Oh dear. And um, there's quite several <laughs> under hypnotic regression. Now uh, there were three girls in Shropshire. Uh, they had a similar experience. And under hypnosis, they come up with very, very similar inside the McCraft and very similar beings in it. It is a very, very convincing <laughs> story you tell. We'll move on quick. And nobody's going to shake you, are they? About 20 foot wide. About 20 foot wide. 14 foot down. Mm -hmm. The bottom spinning. There's some wind, isn't it? Some dark wind. Is. There's a light coming from underneath. I'm getting back into the car. I'm going. The bloody car won't go. I've been sent to investigate this herd of cows. So I was driving up the road here, and I was going to turn right up Fernley Road there to the council estate when I could see in front of me up here this object. It looked to be completely blocking the road. As I get nearer and nearer towards this object, I could see that it wasn't quite what I was expecting to meet at five o'clock or whatever on a, on a, on a November morning in Tomedy. It was diamond shaped. The bottom half of the object was spinning. It was hovering about five foot off the ground. I could see underneath it. It was about 20 feet wide, 14 feet high. 
Alpha Bravo 3 to Alpha Bravo Control. Message over. Try HQ. I tried that several times and it just didn't work. I just couldn't uh, contact anybody. So I picked my clipboard up and I started drawing a sketch of it. And then suddenly, I was at the other side of the object and it had gone. It had, uh, it was like another 50, 100 yards of further road driving. What's up? You're not going to believe what I've just seen. What? Oh, get in. Okay. okay. So we got out of the car like and we examined the, 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 the road yeah, surface, windows, which was the like was a whirlpool big. dry. Something really hot had been hovering above there. Uh, we could see the, all these loose leaves and broken branches there. So he was convinced something had been there. We thought it might have gone in this object, wherever it had gone, it might have gone into the adjoining park. We climbed into the park because the gates were locked and we had to climb across the river. Uh, when we got in there, we could see this herd of cows right in the middle of the rugby pitch. they have been raining all night, but there's no hoof prints belonging to them. How have they got there? It just looked as though, plop, somebody dropped them there, you know? It sounds incredible, but Alan Godfrey isn't the only one who saw something in the same area on the same night. Another witness was school caretaker Leonard Smith. When I came round the, the corner, to check the grounds. I looked up in the sky and this UFO was up in the sky, approximately over where I later learnt the area where Alan Godfrey had his experience. I didn't know at the time. Now the object shot across the valley four times, backwards and forwards, and it vanished over the hills. Then there's John Porter, one of five other police witnesses that night. An hour before Alan Godfrey's encounter, he was out searching moorland quarries for stolen motorbikes. We're walking down the moor from the main road. Something told me to turn around. I turned, and in the sky was a very cold steel blue light. It moved in a sweeping arc across the sky, about 12 miles, I would estimate, in one second. Eventually, I went up the road and observed this same cold steel blue light sweeping away in a low arc towards Todbedding, and that's the last I saw of it. Despite the support, Alan Godfrey became more and more troubled by the most puzzling part of his experience. After it had all happened, I realised that there was half an hour missing from me drawing the object to me turning up at the other side of where the object had been. I was really curious, you know, what... I wanted to know what had happened in that half hour. Alan describes getting out of his car, looking at the object, then he sees a, a light emanating from underneath it, so he gets back into his car, finds his car won't go, and then he's engulfed in a bright white light. There's a light. There's no light. He appears to lose consciousness. Uh, he says everything is black. He then wakes up in a room where he sees a tall man He's well, also surrounded by six small robots. Isn't that horrible? Pardon? Isn't that horrible? Who's horrible? There. Who's they? I want to talk about them. Right. He's made the subject of some well, sort of pseudo-medical examination. In due spread. course, he's put back in his car. But Alan Godfrey himself admits he doesn't know what to make of the hypnosis. After the my initial sighting, I did read quite a few science fiction books and it is quite possible that that part of the hypnotic regression uh, is, has got jumbled up in my mind. But I must stress that I did see a UFO that night. Make no mistake about that. I definitely saw what I saw. And nobody on this earth will ever tell me any different. I saw what I saw. That object was real. If I'd have got out of the car and thrown a brick at it, it would have gone bang. 